Hey, welcome back to the channel. All right, we are gonna cover number 32 through 15 in MCOC. This game has like over 300 champions. Being in the top 32 means you are extremely powerful. So hopefully uh, when you hear your champion's name either today or in the video that will be coming out in just a few days after this, we will cover number 14 through number one because it is fun to hear our champion's name on that. If you've missed any of the top 10s for all the classes, the best of 2023, the best of 2024, I will link the playlist in the description and go and check them all out. It's really, really cool. And we get to cover in a quite a bit more detail all the champions that we just don't have the time to do every single month when we do the general monthly tier list. All right, as with every single other top 10, we are now looking at uh, the compilation of my Discord servers voting. And I had just, again, one last huge massive thank you to Aiden Egatron. The, the champions I wanna call out, right? Because uh, there's a few that are obviously going to be different that are on mine and the Illuminized ranks that aren't on this sheet are going to be Sunsot, Werewolf, Shocker, Serpent, and Crossbones. I think it makes sense when you look at all of those because part of why Sunspot is on there is definitely going to be Battlegrounds. We'll talk about that when we get to him. Shocker as well. I do think Shocker is very good for questing. I think Shocker is very good for uh, Alliance War too. And I'm like looking to make sure Shocker is not on the list because I have made a few mistakes this month. Um, Serpent is more defensive oriented, so I could also see that as well. And then Crossbones, this is kind of new, and this has to do with me and my recent, like, almost rediscovering of, of a champion that's been in the game for a very long time. This buff has been like for a very long time. I did the, I, the video saying, I think Crossbones is the best seven star skill champion available uh, in the game. And I, I will link that video. And then also we will talk about that quite a bit when we get to Crossbones. Now there's obviously champions that have taken their place. I just want to call them out quickly, right? Uh, you know, we've got Gallon, Venom, Nimrod, and then there's going to be a few other. But I want to say, like, I think they all make sense. When you get to this part of the game or whenever they're in tiers close to each other, there's going to be like, which mode do you enjoy? Which champion did you pull and learn how to use really well? That's really going to influence your evaluation of them. And if you're recommending to people like, hey, you should rank up this champion. It just feels good to take a look at this. Thanks a lot for doing this, everyone on the server. And then of course, Aiden for spending all the time to compile this, make it into a spreadsheet uh, that we can then use. All right, let's go ahead and get to mine in the Illuminati's top 30, 32 to 15. Okay, hopefully you followed along and you know how we do the ratings. We do them every single month, all the various categories. And so a champion bearing good in war, battlegrounds or just general, right? When we do and we analyze all of those things, can really help propel them into these rankings or make a difference. And just a single point is absolutely massive. All of these champions is going to be six of them. One, yeah, six who've all scored 32 points. That's a tremendous amount of points when you can only get 35 in total. That's the max. Uh, so we're just going to kind of cover them, talk about them. You know, shocker. Yes, battleground score helps push him up. Right. He he has a ramp that then has a cash out moment. So this isn't a champion that's getting a phenomenal long term score or long range or Everest content score. But the fact of the matter is I used him for the uh, toughest spring of sorrow or whatever. You guys know what I'm talking about that, that sort of uh, content absorbing man. I think it was winner of woe actually. And he was great for it. You can use his SP three and, and, and get a much bigger ramp and more damage out of that. You can also just land your heavies at various times throughout the fight. You don't have to go for that big, massive SB2 into the heavy for the massive, massive, you know, basically kill shot in Battlegrounds that I know myself and a lot of others show so frequently. It's just he's so good at that. And the amount of health he can finish off in one single heavy and get there so quickly. I've talked about this at length. I put all of my generic and my tech seven star six stones that are incredibly rare as of, as of this filming into Shocker, I've taken him to signature level nine, or 88, and I have literally zero regrets about doing it. It's helping me in Battlegrounds fights faster, and in a mode like that where time is of the essence, it's been a phenomenal, phenomenal use. Let's move on. Warlock is a phenomenal example of what I talk about when we talk about the meta, right? And the way we define the meta, the way we are analyzing the meta. It's not dictated by battlegrounds or war, it's dictated by what defenders, nodes, and things like that have been coming out, right? We have a whole separate battlegrounds list, and part of why we did that is so that the battlegrounds list doesn't influence this tier list too much. Not everyone enjoys battlegrounds, and the vast majority of players are not shooting for Celestial nor Mysterium. To be in Mysterium 1, I think you have to be in the top 400 players in the game. 
there is a massive player base that's not does not even care about hitting that. And so I don't want that influencing our tier list too much. And the spreadsheet wizards made a wonderful spreadsheet that you can configure to how you're playing the game. Warlock happened to actually be a not bad counter to some of the most difficult defenders that have come out in the game uh, as of late. Also has the cold snap immunity, right? So it's the bleed, the poison, the cold snap, and then out as a seven star as well, gives him that extra oomph, right? That extra power that the seven stars clearly have. It also means he's gonna have an extended life cycle, right? That's It's not surprising. I don't think this is a broken champion. This isn't one of those champions that I'm shocked came as a seven. I am a little surprised he came as early because it allowed uh, summoners to pull him and then awaken him, making him a problem when you're doing your PvP modes and you have to fight him and, and you're running recoil, right? Or not recoil, but uh, willpower but also then helps you out a lot when you're going up against healing or if your opponent is running willpower. Absolutely fantastic champion has a, it's not a heal block, I believe it's been rewarded to, uh, can not heal, but it's fantastic. And then you can go to the SB2 and if you're running recoil, you get those really big, nice big armor breaks, uh, get some crits and you can do some pretty massive damage with him as well. And as long as you have him ranked at like a equal variety, right? Like you want, Warlock's one of those champions that in my opinion, to get the most out of him, you really want him ranked at the like the highest you can do it because he doesn't hit the hardest to begin with, but when ranked equally with what you're trying to defend or defeat, he can hit pretty darn hard. Fantastic champion. The way the meta, the way we define it has moved, Warlock is definitely strongly in the top 30 champions in MCOC. All right, Gallon. Now, I think I said when I was doing my Discord servers rankings that Gallon uh, was not going to show up, but surprise, here he is. Uh, you know, because I, I because I personally feel that Gallon is has like a bit of a dan down arrow. If you uh, saw the Cosmic rankings, you know I talked about that at length. I think I just assumed and I kind of had a blind spot that he wasn't going to be here, but here he is. He definitely has the 32 ranking. I went back and looked to make sure of that. It does make sense to me. A lot of your Battlegrounds players have ascended their Gallon, right? Or if they are Gallon users, they have ascended him to get everything you can out of him, right? Because one of the things with Gallon is like, you can't increase his attack, I think, without doing it through his own ranking or things like that. So uh, there's almost like a cap on what he can do in one single harvest. That's why I believe, I, and I fully believe this. One, I do think we will eventually see Gallon as a seven. I, I, I do, that's just my opinion we're going to see him move back up and it'll be fully due to meta score. The only reason why he's fallen down and why he wasn't win in the conversation with Hercules and Hulkling and CGR for best cosmic champion is because he just was kind of reaching his max CGR. Just the damage really can get bigger with those armor breaks. And we've talked about that. We'll talk about that when we get to CGR and all those other champions. This is a great champion, really unique in his class with his various immunities and that sort of thing. Really felt like he was evolving the relationship between Cosmic and Mystic. Phenomenal champion. I, If enough resources come my way, even I will take him to rank five and ascend him. All right, let's move on to the next one. Serpent. I, you know, I, I love this guy, and I think part of it my enjoyment of playing him offensively might be uh, over making me overlook what an absolute nuisance this guy, menace this guy is on defense, right? Sometimes in Battlegrounds, I, uh, opponents will ban my America Chavez and my Kushala, and then I have no one uh, for Serpent, especially if he's awakened. And I think you ideally do want him awakened, not only for uh, offensive use, but for the defensive use, right? That immortality and those sorts of things. And then the big, huge power gain he gets along with that too. I mean, how many of us have died to an SP3 from Serpent after we feel like we've probably killed him? He's tough. He's absolutely brutal, but this isn't uh, you know about rank ups. And so if Battlegrounds isn't your thing, you're not too interested in him defensively. He has what I believe is called the true focus, which gives the evade and miss counter. He has a really nice power gain. It's not as powerful as Hyperion's, but then that cuts both ways, right? You can say like, oh, well, it's not as good as Hyperion's. And, and it's not as far as its ultimate power source, but the really nice thing about it is that it fits in really well with his loop and what you're wanting to do as far as throw your specials into the opponent's block and also there are scenarios where you don't want to throw your special three or you don't want to throw your special two. And so you don't need to worry nearly as much about him having so much power gain that he pushes you past the SB1 and into the SB2. And if you're wondering what I'm talking about, the special two is the one you want to go to if your opponent has armor ups. OK, that's how that's going to work. Without that, you want to be throwing your SP1. And then I believe if it's a much longer fight, then you're going to want to go to your special three. 
great champion. Uh, I look forward to hopefully soon awakening mine, uh, my seven star pool, and then I will be ranking them up. I can assure you of that. All right, let's move on to uh, the skill champion that has made their way in here. And a really cool twist, and part of why I am doing, doing the Vega uh, Prime account, in recording the uh, top 10 skill video versus recording this one, even though there's not that many days in between, uh, I ranked up my Chilith and she continues to get more powerful and she is just a force. The damage, I get it. And I think I'm understanding why we're not seeing her as much. One is, you know, she's one of those champions where she came out in that time where people wanted to invest in their seven stars. Or if they're investing their sixes, they wanted them to pay like immediate dividends, like Battlegrounds, War, something like that. Or like, uh, well, she could be phenomenal in Acropolis. Uh, Bitter Steel like soloed half of the fights there with her. I'm kind of not exaggerating. She's fantastic. She's phenomenal. She's really well made. Even her animations with the insane reach on her heavy and your desire to land your heavies. She even has some built-in protections for if the defender is bleed immune. She can have her really great cleanse. So you can see why she is a powerful war champion. She's a bit of a menace on defense too. So she's got some dual use capabilities in battlegrounds. And then, like I just said, I realize it's only act five, but I can tell this is a champion that if I have her at the right variety, meaning star level, I will be definitely using her in question two. I very much want to pull her on my uh, Vega Prime or Vega 583 account. So hopefully I can start ranking her up and using her in Act 9 and things like that. I, I, I think she's very well suited for our current game and where our game appears to be headed as far as the relationship between skill and the rest of the contest. Now let's move on to a champion that's quite a bit older and I think is just a smidge better. Let's take a look. Crossbones. Now, you know, if you're following the channel, you know that. And you know that I am like definitely deeply infatuated with Crossbones. And I have him like a smidge higher. Me personally. The Illuminati hasn't signed off on it yet, which is why you see them with the exact same ratings here. I think he's a smidge higher, like a tier, like one point. Not as good as, you know, the other skills you're going to see on this list. And that's for rank up advice, right? If we're giving rank up advice and you come to us, it means you're, you know, you're wondering and we're saying like, hey, the breadth of the game, this one's probably going to see you the farthest in a variety of modes. And then as you start to say what you're interested in, then we can narrow that down. Again, that's why we have a separate Battlegrounds tier list. This guy has a lot of really unique qualities, right? Like the can't miss, or I'm sorry, the can't crit. That's unique, it's cool. The ability to go way above 100% defensive ability, accuracy reduction. The shrugging of all debuffs, not just uh, non-damaging or just damaging or just even a certain type of debuffs, all of them. And then he powers up from them. So in his like just base match, right? If he's playing against a villain champion in a node that does not apply debuffs, he's good. Yeah, he's very good. I think he's well deserving of like the second tier. I think he's in the conversation with these other skill champions that we're often talking about with him. But if you put him in a fight that has nodes that putting on debuffs, he goes up, he goes higher, he gets stronger, he gets stronger faster. And then if you put him in a fight against a hashtag hero champion, which is by far significantly over half the game champions in the game. I went to Ant-Man and checked it out. And I'm like, I keep feeling like I'm fighting here. I keep feeling like I'm fighting heroes. Then he becomes like a dominant champion and almost becomes in the same conversation with the other skill champions we're going to talk. So if his floor, I feel like is measurable, it's similar to champions like Chiel, Shang-Chi, uh, Bullseye, and the like thereof. And then his ceiling, and it's all dependent on the fights you're taking into, is gets him, I think, significantly higher then ultimately I come up with a better champion. And this is a champion that's good for battlegrounds. This is a champion that's good for war and definitely, definitely, definitely good for questing. And he is one of the champions that in my opinion, relics have like transformed him. I think the appearance of relics has made him a significantly easier champion to play, to keep the fury buffs up and get the massive, massive, massive damage and defensive ability accuracy that he's capable of to keep it up and keep it going. All right, now we're gonna about to get to the champions. They have 33 total points. Again, this is th 33 out of 35. Um, and it's wild because again, there's six of them here. 
And we've got a champion from 2017. This is se over seven years ago, because I see he came out in March 2nd. Um, just insane, right? And I talked about him at length in the mutant tier list. And I talked about how I think over time, one, I think we're never seeing him as a seven star. I just, I also thought we'd never see Domino though, so who knows? In the game, it, you know, there's been a roller coaster with Archangel. Came in, I think a little quiet. Every, people were like not so sure what to do with him. Then we started playing like, oh my good God, this guy is phenomenal, amazing. Just like shut it, the, the concept of 2017 of just shutting off nodes and things and then like healing and all of that, like it just kind of blew our, our collective minds. And then we talked about it length in the mutant uh, video. So I won't go over the whole thing, but essentially like his value did go down for a variety of reasons. And then due to the game expanding and less champions having a bleed or poison immunity, his value has definitely been on the rise. And I think we're starting to see a bit of the fall again, right? And I think that's due to health pools increasing, due to nodes and things like that coming out that make it so we can't decrease the ability accuracy. And that's really what he's wanting to do. Uh, we're seeing like more tenacity and these sorts of things that are just making it a little bit more difficult for him to get up those neurotoxins and just shut things off or make it impossible to shut things off to begin with. And where you can use him, he's literally probably the best scenario. If you can land your heavy safely and the opponent can be bled and poisoned, I don't think there's anyone better in the game than this guy. As I talked about in the video, though, I think he's never come in as a seven. And I think as a result, just drew do fully and totally only due to the meta score in this tier list. He will slowly start to fall down. Feels like a pretty good thing, though, to be able to say that and still be one of the top 30 champions in the game. I mean, he's within the top 27, in my opinion. He's great. He's phenomenal. Uh, I, In my opinion, I'm going to do the best champions to ascend. This is one. Go out. Have fun. Get him as strong as you can for as long as you possibly can. All right, let's move on. Kitty Pride. It's wild to see how long it's been since she's in the game. It feels like it was forever ago. And and using the MCOC spotlight champions, I see like how few mutants came out in the last three years. And it makes a lot of sense. And I think it's why we're seeing like a bit of a mutant resurgence, which has been really, really cool. Uh, Kitty's broken, right? Uh, she can just go unblockable. She can just not take damage. She feels like you're supposed to counter her by not missing. But uh, we've seen how much she like cheeses fights when that happens, right? People are literally still using her to take Bullseye. And Bullseye feels like he's got some clauses in there that were designed specifically to counter Kitty, even though, you know, Bullseye is a skill champion and Kitty is a mutant. But I think that's more of a Kitty issue. And that shows just, like, how broken and how kind of, like, protected her loop is. Like, her abilities have, like, fail-safes and ways of kind of saying, like, <laughs> you, you thought you were going to get, you thought you were going to turn me off and you can't. And this is all without her synergies with Tigra and Ghost, right? I mean, this is like Battlegrounds or if you're just like solo playing with her. Uh, I really like Kitty. I enjoy playing Kitty when she came to the game. I got her early and had a blast with it all. But I will admit she's broken. And the only reason why she's not higher up, I think, is due to modes like Battlegrounds. She's a little difficult to use. She's not as widely versatile as you want, like kind of your pure attackers. There's been a meta or two where she's kind of been an annoying defender, but a lot of the uh, tech champions that came out, right, like Nimrod just shut it down. And then other champions just handle her so well. And then plus a lot of us have learned to fight her with baiting the SB1, letting, um, letting it, us block it essentially, right? And then we just go in, our health pool's really small. So when you have like a pure attacker, you, you want them to have, be incredibly, incredibly versatile, incredibly strong and incredibly fast. And she's typically not the fastest. That being said, if you're coming up in the game and you pull a six-star Kitty Pride, I definitely feel like she is by far one of the best Ascension candidates. And we will talk about that when we do the updated version of the best champions to Ascend. Let's go ahead and move on. Sunspot is another case study in like what Battlegrounds has done to our game and in champion evaluations. Now we've talked at length, like I'm not going to let Battlegrounds dominate the list. There's a reason why we do the, the Battlegrounds tier list. And Sunspot's actually higher, more highly rated than he is on this one. He's still good in war. You can definitely use him. But he's one of those ones where, like, typically you reach for him more often if he's tactic. Uh, he can be great in questing. And that's what started getting me to start reevaluating him was it was a pretty early Act 8 
quest, if I recall correctly, that really wanted me to have a lot of debuffs. And I was like, oh, Sunspot puts on a lot of debuffs. Started playing them more. And then lo and behold, you know, Battlegrounds, he is now definitely one of the most dominant attackers. Kind of like the next level of what I was just talking about. Kitty is he's insanely versatile. He has almost no defense. He had literally no, no defensive uh, value whatsoever as you get into Battlegrounds because people know how to fight him. His animations aren't that difficult. And so those attackers have to be insanely versatile and insanely fast. And he is that. Even taking champions who are immune to incinerate because he can get his large damage fast enough. He's Depending on the meta, he's one of the best counters to Bullseye. I've shown that, right? Perfect block mechanic without being immune to bleed or anything like that. And then what puts him over the top is he has a power gain. And it's not a buff or something like that, which is actually kind of cool because it can't be nullified. But the ability to gain power, to get a special one in, get, I think it's called the flare states, and then get to a special two and just destroy something is nearly unparalleled. He's holding strong. He's out as a seven star. I don't think he's going anywhere unless we just see more and more versatile mutant champions come to the game. And they do seem to be like we've got North Star coming and things like that. But his Battlegrounds rating... I don't see going anywhere anytime soon. Definitely going to maintain his value in MCOC. Ghost, I mean, she is just like the epitome of a different era, in my opinion. You know, uh, you can see that July 18th of 2018. So this is about six years ago. She's You don't see her. She's not as dominant as, you know, a lot of the champions are going to see it on uh, higher up on the list. And you, you'll still hear me refer to her as broken. And I can understand that I see that and I get the comments from a lot of like newer players and things like that, or people who are very much dominant thinking about Battlegrounds. Battlegrounds is their driving force to play the game. And I get it. The mode is really, really fun. But when you come to questing, she's still fantastic. Synergizing her up with Wasp is helpful. And Wasp is pretty good. I mean, Forgotten shows us that pretty regularly. She's not as good in Battlegrounds anymore because you often were going to be wanting her to run recoil for her to be as effective as possible in Battlegrounds, and then that hurts your defenders. You're still good in Battlegrounds, don't get me wrong, but if you remove Battlegrounds from the equation, I think you're still left with this is a, basically a broken champion. The almost only way to stop her is to have a champion who counters miss or just have an auto uh, 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 armor break automatically applied to her because it turns her off, essentially. But in, unless those two scenarios exist, she's got that power gain, especially if you get her SIG going in high. I've never been... Well, that's not true. I Early on in Ghost's uh, presence in the game, I mean, we're going back to like five stars, if I recall correctly. I did play Ghost quite a bit because I got her early and SIG'd her up a bit, and I used her a lot in War. I don't think we ever see her as a seven star. I mean, maybe we do. She might be one of those champions where the game has evolved enough that despite being broken in a lot of scenarios, we maybe get to see. And the reason why I'm now wondering, because I would have had her on the never seven star uh, train before, is that we got Corvus. And I feel like a lot of what I'm saying about Corvus could be said about Ghost if you remove uh, some of the actual facts about the champion, right? But if you think about the generalities of what I'm saying, I'm actually really curious, uh, listener, viewer, you tell me, do you think Ghost is ever coming as a seven star? I'm now actually beginning to wonder as I make this video. Either way, uh, if she doesn't come as a seven star, I believe we'll see her continue to move down this list. If she does, I think she's holding strong, potentially moving up. Let's go ahead and move on to the final two champions uh, for this score. Werewolf. I mean, I've talked about him. He's, this is actually the third video in this June Top 10 uh, series that he's going to be in. I just want to pull him so I can speak from my own experience, not just listening to the Illuminati and watching videos and seeing you all kick my butt with him in Battlegrounds. But he's got two of the most dominant things that we talk about like all the time in this game and on this channel. Power game. We talk about that. Like It allows you just to get around things. Threats are minimized often when our opponent can't throw specials or when we are able to end fights before they can't throw specials. And power gain, he's got it in spades. Then he's got the damage, right? The power gain gets him there. The power gain gets his foot in the door. And then 
the damage just blows the door open, blows the roof off the house, right? Of this analogy that we're going with. I want one for my own. I don't, there's really not much else I can say about him. He does have a bit of a skill cap. You do need to know how to play him well. You need to, have, you need to know how to work in uh, his howl, right? And get the power game going. But we just see him going way outside his class wheel of just cosmics and destroying some of the bigger, best defenders in the game and doing it very, very fast. Good in battlegrounds, pretty good in war, very good in, in questing. All right, let's go ahead and check out the last one at this score. Silk. Silk is an interesting one for me because, uh, you know, I've got my seven star. I have not awakened her. And for my purposes, my deck, often I will want her awakened. And so it's prevented me from really diving in and playing her significantly. Now, that being said, kind of everything I just said about werewolves as far as like seeing you all kick up my defender's butts with a champion, you can apply to Silk. I also enjoy watching Fintech's videos and things like that. So I see how powerful she is. The one thing I will say, and it's not a detraction, again, remember, we're talking about the best 30 champions in the game with over 300 or around there, is I do think she's stronger in Battlegrounds and more than she is in Questing. I think if you're if Questing's your main mode of playing the game, I think there's other signed champions that I would look to first, not and not only the ones that are going to be rated higher than her. Yeah, no, I feel actually quite strongly about that. I think her value lies in War and in Battlegrounds, in the smaller and moderate health pool levels, and she's great in it. And if that's where you're enjoying playing, rank her up, and then of course, she's going to be very, very good in questing as well. And she's even got the evade that can help you get out of some really, really tight spots with uh, the very specials of champions and things like that. So she's great. I'm not saying she's not good in questing. What I'm saying is I think she's stronger in war and in Battlegrounds, and if that's why you ranked her up, you could definitely use her in Questing, but if I, Questing was my main enjoyment of this game, there are other skill champions I would look to rank up instead of Silk. All right, now we're on to the six uh, champions who all scored 34 points. <laughs> Absolutely phenomenal. Um, and we'll start off with future Ant-Man, right? We've, I think you're getting a sense of how we're doing this uh, via the classes now. The thing that I love about him, uh, outside of obviously the great power control, really, really good burst damage, good in short form and in your questing form as well, too. He does have a bit of a skill cap to play him. I think if you just read his kit through thoroughly and you really uh, do the reps, you're going to get him pretty well. Is one, he uh, kind of hoses Gallant a little bit with this whole like can't take too much damage at a time or heals it back or something like that mechanic which is really, really cool. And I think that's also contributing a little bit to uh, Gallon's sl slight descent in Battlegrounds rankings, right? Is It's about who are people putting in their decks. Another thing that's way more important is, you know, we've talked about this a lot with Hulkling and Titania, is I don't feel like currently your uh, AI manipulation debuffs are working as well as they did before. Now, they've always been like a chance thing, right? There are bias things. They were never 100%. But I do feel strongly that they are not as potent as they were like, let's say, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 months ago. Now, I don't know if that's true or not, but I know a lot of you feel similarly. And because of that, because of that uh, thinking and that feeling and going through it, I've really been analyzing this. And I feel like champions whose AI manipulation live on themselves, like future Ant-Man does with his Surging Swarm, they feel just as reliable as they ever did. And in comparison, they feel to the Intimidate and Fury and those sort of things, they feel even more reliable. I absolutely love that about future Ant-Man. One of the things that is my absolute favorite, and then of course, how well his animations go with what he's trying to do. Cosmic Ghost Rider. Like you can't help but look at this guy and just know it's gonna he's gonna be a badass. You know, the massive, massive armor breaks. And you know, one of the things that we used to say about him and why I do think he's he's similar to Archangel in a way, similar. In that, you know, the guy uh, came out strong, dominant, eye popping, a little bit of like, wow, I can't believe Kabam let this come into the game. They started playing him more and we're like, yeah, he's amazing. He's fun. But, you know, like evade was an issue at that time and he wants to land his five hit combos and things like that. Uh, you know, I'm really proud of the videos I put forth on Cosmic Ghost Rider. But then like Slayer of Gods and MSD just took this to outrageous new levels. Right. 
showed us all these various rotations and and ways of like getting the fury and all, like it's just amazing and wild what he can do. And then as we've talked about so much this month and just in general on this channel, due to the new defenders that have come out and him actually being pretty good for some of them, he's risen in meta score. He's risen in value. And not that he was falling off. It's just that that has kept him more relevant and maybe even promoted him a little bit. I do not think we ever see him as a seven star. Like he is on my... I mean, we're never seeing Herc, but I think that he is a close second in regard to that as in the Cosmic class. I think we have a higher likelihood of seeing Hulkling than Cosmic Ghost Rider because where he is so good, he just shuts it down similar to Archangel. All right, let's move on. Juggernaut. <laughs> uh, you know, this is one of those, I don't, I don't have him as a seven star and I really, really want him. <laughs> I think that might be all I'm gonna say here. Now, uh, you know, the potentially up there with Sunspot, and it's hard to say. Sunspot, I think, is more versatile across metas. Juggernaut is more dominant when he can work. He shapes drafts. He just shapes whole matches. Um, yeah, there, there's still no demo. I'm out of things to say about this guy and how dominant and amazing he is where he uh, when he works. Surprised he came as a seven star. I think part of that was because we as a community hadn't fully discovered all these things and Battlegrounds wasn't as fully mature as it is now. He's great. I've even used my my six star in questing and I have an absolute blast with it. You get uh, his like maximum momentum or whatever it's called. You get all those unstoppables. You go into the SP2, you get the big fury and you absolutely destroy stuff. All right, I won't spend too much time on it, but again, that is my name. I did actually get to be part of the process. A lot of fun with my buddy DLL, uh, Daddy Long Legs. Kushala, you know, I don't even have mine awakened. Ranks, uh, rank three, seven stars. So that means she's going to be powerful, right? That's like, there's a, I feel like there's a noticeable difference between seven star rank threes and six star rank five ascended. Seven star rank twos feel similarly. They take them to rank three, I think you feel it. So I'm aware of that. That all being said, I have not felt like I've needed her awaken outside of some very, very intense uh, war fights in tier one war. Aside from that and wanting the awakening and even the high sig at that, I have not missed the awakened ability at all. So what I'm ultimately saying is she is great and she is phenomenal. And I think for the vast majority of your uses, you're gonna be just fine without her awakened. And then when you do get her awakened, it's just gonna make her that much more powerful. I'm very excited to do that on my own. She's great in Battlegrounds. She's great in War. She's very, very versatile in Battlegrounds, right? She can put the buffs on the opponent. So outside of your D your outside of your buff immunes, she's gonna have a way around. Phenomenal, phenomenal design. Absolutely love playing her. Do not see her moving down. She is absolutely in no danger. And I'm sure we'll see her on this list again in December and into next year. Hulk, baby. I mean, this is like, it, it's it's really interesting to do these back to back to back in these champions because they couldn't be so different and they just appeal to a different part of what I enjoy about games. And I'm sure it's similar to you as well. We said Juggernaut, who's just like smashing things. He feels like Juggernaut, you're just an unstoppable force. And then you've got Hulk who like, and they did a nice job. And I really like this about his buff is I think there may have been a temptation to like make him take too much damage, but when you play today's game, you know that like you don't want to do that, right? And there could be a temptation to like make him take a lot of time, like a minute, two minutes or something, like very Hulk-esque. Like he takes a beating and then he finally gets pissed off. And he does get stronger in those scenarios. But what they did is they allowed him to do his ramp relatively quickly. And although he's a brawler and an intense one, you have the ability to pick it in a way when he's going to go into his rage mode, right? Can't think of what it's called right now, but you can like land the heavy or something like that. If you want to start a little early, you can get the stuns going. Massive, massive physical bursts uh, off the SP2. And then of course, if you want to go to the SP3, you can. I absolutely love this champion. And you know, in Battlegrounds, we, do, we did promote him into the, the dual threat tier and it has worked out. I do think there's some tricks to fighting him. I've learned that you still have to pay attention. You still have to pull them off. And I know that if I get caught, the thing that scares me the most isn't even his unstoppable off the awakened ability. It's if for somehow I mess up the SP1 decks 
and then you know you are dead because he will stun lock you into oblivion. All right, let's go ahead and cover the last and final champion for this video. And then the final champion for this video, and it just feels fitting. Let's end this with Human Torch, and I'm going to be pretty quick on it. It's his pre-fight. It, it is his pre-fight, right? Yeah, he, he does melt Mystics, and he does melt Energy, and that is tough, right? Uh, but it feels similar to Nimrod, where Nimrod just destroyed uh, Mutant Champions, and he destroyed Healing and Prowess. And I get that, and, and there's probably more just like, there's obviously more pure Mystic Champions in the game, and, and Torch is a problem there. But it's that pre-fight. It's that ability where there's a mode of the game that's a big deal in Battlegrounds. They were when they made Human Torch. I have a feeling they had no clue that Battlegrounds was coming, or if it was, there was definitely no firm concept. And so there was probably no thought that like, hey, this pre-fight that seems like no big deal. Let the player have fun with Human Torch every once in a while. There was no thought that like, hey, we're gonna build this incredible mode that we really want to do well. And he's going to get to use it every single time you use him. The thing that's kind of balancing it out and, and why I feel like, you know, this is working out well is health pools are growing. Seven star rank threes are coming into the game and Torch is struggling to keep up. Plus, the science champ uh, a class around him has gotten so strong, including the nukes, like I just talked about with Silk and Hulk, that people have less and less incentive to just reach for their Torch. I don't even have mine ascended, and I don't think I even have him as a rank five, and I have not missed him. All right, I mean that was thirty-two through fifteen. I again, I want to stress, just even being in, I think the top tens for the classes. I think just even being an honorable mentions for the classes means the champions are phenomenal. And then you get to this level, we are splitting hairs when it comes to analyzing them and trying to say this one's better than this one. And that's why we just rank them. We rank them in their various categories. That's why there's a separate Battlegrounds tier list. And then I'm just reporting to you how the numbers turned out. As usual though, let me know what we think we got right. Let me know what we think you got wrong. Make sure you stay tuned and watch the top one through 14 and all the top tens and then all the videos I have prepared to help get you ready for July 4th. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.